Yeah, you had your hand. What's your American dream? So I, I really, I, I was, I was born overseas, and I didn't come to the states except on an irregular basis, and um, I always saw that. Well, are you legal? Huh? <laughs> Should you be here? Yeah, I got a passport. Got it all. I did it all. Did it all the right way. Are you American citizen? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Naturalized. <laughs> I was about to say. Got, got, got some stories behind it. Actually was a Cuban refugee for a while. But the interesting thing is that um, I saw America not as any of these things the folks are talking about, but it was more like an idea. Um, when I came here, it's funny, I get choked up talking about it. Um, pardon me. It was, it was always an amazing place where, for example, uh, we would come from countries where uh, dictators would take over, where my parents and my father especially found ways to uh, keep us out of physical trouble in spite of soldiers and guns and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I didn't expect to get all <laughs> emotional about it, pardon me. Will we come back to you? No, you no let, me, let me push through this. So, oh, okay. so the issue was that it was a country where laws mattered, where people had the right to their property, where it couldn't be taken away without what I now call due process. <clears throat> I didn't think of it that way at the time, uh, where I felt safe and I felt that there were folks that were that were, uh, had integrity and were sensible, not that they were screaming at each other on TV and, right. and had big political rallies and that sort of thing. That's changed a lot, but the basic, basics are still there. Yeah. And when you talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, yeah, you can live your life. You can li live it with liberty, and you can pursue what you think of as happiness. Now, uh, I was also raised Catholic, so church was important, and I was able to, you know, we were able to practice being a Catholic without any fear of uh, all kinds of religious reprisals and things like that. And then, um, and, and, and it, it, it just seemed like a sensible place where people pursued sensible objectives and they had, they had integrity and reasonableness. And uh, I could, you could see that the moment you landed. Yeah. People were nice, you could drink the water. <laughs> I've, I've had friends that are from overseas. One of the funniest things I noticed, it's an odd thing, but uh, folks that I meet, I said, what is it the one thing you noticed when you came to the States? And they go, you could drink the milk. <laughs> it wasn't, it was, you know, so those are the kind of qualities where, that I really appreciated. Amazing. I didn't expect all that emotion all of a sudden to come out. That was out of nowhere. But anyway. Right on, man. I've been knowing you a long time. I never knew that about you. I'm the onion, baby. Just I keep peeling the back. I didn't know you were an illegal alien. And I didn't know you felt that way about America. I knew you love America, but yeah. I didn't know that. Well, it has a lot it's to do amazing. with my father, too. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he always uh, thought this was, and he wasn't born here. In spite of the last name, a um, bunch of, you know, I, the, the Irish can grow potatoes anywhere, and they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. Amazing, man. Right here. I agree 100% with what you said. It's about, you know, and I, I too, I lived out of the country for a long time and just... Are you illegal too? No, I was oh. born here, uh, but I... But I need to see you birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> I got my passport. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that I just, I, I, like you said, it's the laws. People here follow laws. In other countries, they, they don't. Right. In, in other countries, they take your property. They take, you know, half of your income is, is taxed. Uh, because of the social, um, well, you know, the social, uh, socialism. So, um, that's it. Well, maybe Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, those people should go over there and run for president. I absolutely 100%. They already have what they want. Yeah, they should go to Venezuela. It's a great, yeah, great that's country amazing. for them. I'm going to write them a note. <laughs> that's amazing. The reason I asked this question when I was growing up in, uh, in Alabama, on the plantation, I remember, I never... I never thought about not having freedom because all my life I've had it, right? So I used to walk down the road if I wanted to. Um, I, I remember when they would have basketball games at school that night. I would have to walk the road to get to the school, but I had someone bring me back home. I never thought I was not free. I just never felt that way or thought that way. And then when I turned 15 years old, 
I um, got my first rifle on my birthday because you had to turn 15 first. And I just went out and started shooting rabbits with it, squirrels and things like that. And then um, we got our first color TV. I know the millennials don't know it, but we used to have color TVs. I mean, black and white TVs. I got my first black and white TV. Did you know that we, at one time we, didn't, we had black and white TVs? You knew about that? Oh, OK. That's right, yeah. And so when we got the TV, uh, I used to watch white people celebrating the 4th of July with flags and parades and things like that, right? And I'm like, wow, I would love to do that. They love America. They love it, right? As a kid, I was thinking that. And then, uh, and we celebrated 4th of July as well, but in the black community, right? And they had barbecue and baseball games and things like that. It was so much fun. Uh, but I'd never been in a parade and had the flag going and stuff like that. And so it was, I mean, I never imagined that those things would not exist, that American citizens would try to take those basic things away from you. You know, the freedom of speech and uh, uh, the right to bear arms and to just be yourself, do what you want. I never imagined that. And that's what made me think about it more because when I was growing up, I never imagined not having the freedom to just do what I want, be what I want, say what I want, go where I want. And I know some black people think that the Jim Crow law was a bad thing, and maybe it was in some areas, but I don't, I'm not aware of it being bad. I know it was bad because we were restricted and that we couldn't go to the white people's bathrooms and all that, but I didn't care about that. It didn't matter to me, as long as I could go to the bathroom. And uh, so I never imagined that one day American citizens would be fighting to take away those rights from you. You can't say certain things. You can't carry a gun, so you can't protect yourself. And then I never imagined that they would bring enemies into the country and then tell you you can't protect yourself from them. Isn't that amazing? So, I was, so that's why I asked the question, what does that mean to people nowadays? Because we're really losing, as someone said, we're losing it. We can get it back now that you're all waking up, right? But we're losing those basic God-given freedoms. And that's what America is all about. And the things that is important to us have been taken away. So you got to start speaking up. You got to start fighting back. I think you should start running for office. You know, get back into the government because we need good men and women in government, men and women who love what's right. Um, when I uh, got my first rifle, nobody taught me to shoot. No one said, oh, don't kill anyone at home. You got to lock your bullets and guns away. Why you want a gun when you got to lock it away? Or lock the bullets away. If somebody come into your house, you got to tell them, you know what, hold on a minute. <laughs> I got to get my gun out of the locker. That doesn't make sense. Why have a gun if you're going to lock it away? And no one said you could only buy a certain amount of bullets. That's crazy. That's like total insanity. And so you guys need to get involved. Really, you really do. Because once you lose it, it's not easy to get it back. It really not. So you got to start speaking up. You got to get involved. And nothing wrong with Christians being involved with politics. Matter of fact, you better be getting involved in politics. The men who founded this country, they believed in God. That's why we became so great. And so get involved. Get involved in politics and all that. All right? Don't take it personally. It's a spiritual battle a warfare between good and evil. But I never imagined, I can't, I still can't, I know it's evil, but I can't understand why would anyone who live here, whether you're illegal or legal or whatever, right, it's so nice to be here, why would you want to take away the freedom that you came to, you fought to get to? You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense. You know there has to be a Satan in order to convince you to do that. It's just crazy. It's so crazy to me, it's hard to believe. And they're lying to you because they want to control you. It's all about the money and the power, really. That's what it's all about. Because once they take your freedoms away, freedoms away, they now have control over you. You have to do what they say. And there's no way else to go to that I'm aware of. Is there, is there one place we can go, Mark? No. Nowhere. I can't even imagine not saying what I want to say. You can't tell me what to say or where. 
But there are literally people on earth right now, I mean in America right now, that can't speak up. They're afraid to. But even if you speak in so-called hate speech, you have the right to say that. Totally you have the right that. to be hateful. You know what I'm saying? Right, for sure. We need to know that you're hateful so we can stay away from you. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't take away that person's right to speak so-called hate. I remember as a kid speaking my mind. And I, my aunt told me what, my aunt did something wrong. And I told her, you can't be doing that. That's wrong. That's not, I said something to her. She didn't like it. She's like, boy, one day your mom going to get you in trouble. And so here it is. <laughs> she was right about that. Amazing, huh? Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad you brought up hate speech because I was about to raise my hand. It's conservatives and people who generally like the freedoms we were born with are shooting themselves in the foot when they use words like hate speech. Just, yeah, to even say, just to even say hate speech, even if you're making fun of it, you're, there's somebody who's weak around you who will say, oh, there's hate speech. You, right. can't, you can't do that. That's right. But the weird thing about it, the people who are saying that you're speaking hate speech, they speak hate speech. Sure. It's yeah. like they're doing it themselves, right? Mm -hmm. by, by calling you a name or saying you're wrong for saying something, that's hate speech. You're trying to take away my freedom by telling me I'm wrong. Yep. It, so everybody's doing it. I like think everyone discriminates. They say don't discriminate, right? <laughs> There's not one person on earth that don't discriminate. Not one. I don't know how I would live if I can say what I wanted to say. Yeah. I don't know what I, how would I live, you know? Because you're going to always have right and wrong going on. You're going to always have good and bad happening. you got to say something. Yeah. You can't always do this. <laughs> you know what that is, right? Yeah. You're not allowed to applaud anymore. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Really? They are taking away your ability to applaud. Uh, so now you have to do this, like you're deaf or something, or blind. I went and looked at this building. You know, we had to get a new building. So I looked at this building. It was okay, right? It had a lot of parking space and all that kind of stuff. But behind the building was a bunch of apartments. And then it had Mexicans. Uh, what are those Mexican things? RVs. How come the Mexicans like RVs so much? It may not have been a Mexican RV, but it looked like a Mexican one. So whatever. It was a Mexican RV, right? So I told this, the guy that, the sales guy, I said, oh, I, this, this is nice, but I can't move over here because I ain't moving in the hood. And I said, there go a Mexican RV and uh, a Mexican building. And won't they kill me? I said, what they try to rob from me? And the man got mad at me. He's like, I don't know. I don't judge. <laughs> the sound person. And I'm like, so you don't judge the blacks and the Mexicans. You're not afraid. You're not concerned about where you live, right? He's like, I don't judge. And he just kind of stared at me, and I stared at him. <laughs> he said, I got to go. Isn't that amazing? I want, to be, I want to be as careful as possible. You don't just want to move anywhere. And so when I see those trailers, I become very concerned. And er Ernest told me I need to be quiet, right? You want to get a building, yeah. <laughs> He's he like, you need to be quiet if you want to get a building. <laughs> so if I ask the salesman and they sell me a building and then I get hurt, at least I can say, well, I asked them, right? And they, they, you're supposed to ask. Even when I, if I bought a house or something, right, or an apartment, rent an apartment, I always ask the salesperson or the renter person, did someone, anybody die in here? Because if they died in there, I'm not taking it. You're supposed to ask. But people are so soft-hearted now, they don't want to play. It's bad how things are. And that's not the American way, really. When I was growing up, everybody said and done whatever they wanted to. They had respect for one another. But there was no such thing as can't speak up and all that. Or getting your feelings hurt and all that. You know what I mean? It didn't exist. This is abnormal. It's not the American dream.